2015. And Member Leffler Kemp, would you call um, roll? Just hold on a sec. Go ahead. Member Harla? Here. Member Johnston? Here. Member Mernicke? Here. Mem uh, Chair Saliga Punko? Here. Member Welty? Here. Member Westholm? Here. Superintendent Grounset? Here. Assistant Superintendent Crawford? Here. Deputy Clerk Bill Hansen? Uh, Secretary Melinda Tebelt and student reps, uh, Mr. Goosens and Mr. Olofsson. Thank you. Okay. Um, will everyone please rise and join me in, in sing, um, saying the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of, of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to um, ask Mrs. Norton to come forward. And Mrs. Terry Norton is the art teacher at Denfeld. And we were um, honored to have many of her students in her stained glass classes um, who made special stained glass um, I guess picture, well, I don't know what you even call it, mosaics, thank you, um, in honor to recognize for some, someone important or something important in their lives. So I would really appreciate um, if she would say just a couple words about her students. Thank you. I don't even know if I'm doing this right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Terry Norton. I'm the teacher um, at Dunfeld, I teach um, art and I teach stained glass metals and fibers is just one of the classes that I teach but the students that were here tonight um, were advanced students that um, as part of the curriculum we asked them to do something in service learning and we um, asked them to pick something that is personally important to them and it's our way of kind of um, having them get civically involved and do it through art. And it's just one avenue that kids can um, be a, an active participant in our community and start their lifelong journey on being um, positive um, role models within their community. So I'm honored to represent Denefeld and all of the students that were here had a great experience. And thank you guys very much for hosting them. They, they loved being here, so thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Norton. We really appreciate it. I know last month we, had, we were honored with the Denfeld Jazz Band, and this month we're honored with the Denfeld Art Class. So we have to remember it's all about our students, and we appreciate that. Great teachers like you. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to um, the approval of the agenda. Could I have a motion, please? So moved by uh, Member Westholm and seconded by Member Harla. Is there any... Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion say aye. aye. Opposed? That carries unanimously. Okay, we're going to move to reading and approving the minutes. So board members, would you go to the first one is from March 17th. Um, could I have a motion to approve? I should move. Um, moved by Member Welty. Is there a seconded by Member Murnicky? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries unanimously. And then turn to the minutes of the special school board meeting for Tuesday, March 24th. Um, could I have a motion, please? Moved move by Member Westholm. Is there a second? Seconded by Member Leffler Kemp. Um, is there any discussion? I would just say one thing. Um, Melinda, you caught that? Okay, good. Um, is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries unanimously. And then we have the regular school board meeting for March 24th. Um, could I have a motion, please? So moved. Moved by Member Harla. Is there any? Second. second? Okay, seconded by Member Myrna Key. Any discussion? Member Johnston? <clears throat> yes, uh, a couple of corrections and a couple of clarifications. First one I had a question on was on page two in the public comments. Uh, member Loeffler Kemp, read district mission statement. I was just wondering uh, what that mission statement was that she read. She'll be reading it again tonight. We've read it the last few months now. Just that we remember that we're about educating our students. 
Okay, anything else? Uh, yes, I would ask her to say where she got that mission statement from. Sure, it's right out of our <laughs> annual report. Um, and uh, it's really a summary. And just like we started this year to, or the start of the year, to have our student reps sharing more about what's going on in the schools, um, the idea of uh, doing a short kind of mission statement came from um, uh, hearing that other school districts do it. And so I, I brought that forward that we did it. And uh, as clerk, that's why I'm reading a quick summary. Well, I wasn't complaining about it. I was just asking where it came from. And it's different from what's in our bylaws and our policies. So I was just curious where that came from. Thank you for explaining that. I uh, also had a, a request if I could be given on page uh, four, if I could be given a final copy of the special resolution, which was our, 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 uh, our bonding for $44 million. There was a, in our thing, there's a lot of blanks, and I wonder if I could give a copy of the final sheet that have the blanks filled in. I'll just a request there to the superintendent. I uh, also have a correction on page 25, down at the bottom. It was, it was on a vote to table of resolution about the Civil uh, Service Board. And it's, it says that I voted nay for that. I voted yay for that resolution to table. Want that corrected? Yeah, you might have to check that just to make sure on the tape. <clears throat> um, again, the last, uh, last uh, clarification I had was on page 29, uh, where minutes say that there was a uh, question was called. I objected to that. It does not say that I appealed that, which I did. Just reminding people that, uh, yeah. pardon? Corrected. Okay, thank you. I'd just like to remind the board and the chair that according to our policy 8095 and 9095, it says that we shall follow Robert's rules of order. It's not an optional thing. And that since we did not follow, if there's a Somebody who calls a question, as one of the members did, cannot just yell that out. They have to do that in order when the people have to speak. And I sent that to all the board afterwards, some clarifications on points of order, appeals, and when you can call a question. So I would appreciate that, uh, that the chair would start following those rules as well as the rest of the board. Thank you. We're going to vote on the regular school board meeting, March 24th, the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries unanimously. And then we have the special school board meeting um, from April 13th. Um, could I have a motion, please? So moved. moved by Member Murnicky, seconded. Seconded. Seconded by Member Westholm. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries unanimously also. Okay, we're going to move into school and community recognition. And I know that we need to go down below. Members of the board, this month I'm pleased to present Lester Park Elementary School for Recognition. Pat Finkston and Nancy Dallum and Alex are with us tonight representing Lester Park. We know hunger is a problem in the Northland. For eight years, Lester Park Elementary School has made it their mission to help make a difference in the lives of those experiencing hunger. Pat spearheads the school's food, food, food drive and has done so several, for several years. Nancy worked closely with Pat to organize and support the drive. Pat initially set a goal eight years ago of collecting one ton of food, and the Lister Park community has achieved or exceeded this goal since then. That includes this year. 
Students and staff from Lester Park Elementary School recently collected over a ton of food for donation to the, United, to the Union Gospel Mission in Duluth. There was so much food that mission staff had to make two trips to transport it all. In addition to collecting 2,961 pounds of food, excuse me, <clears throat> they also raised $471 in funds. Congratulations, Pat, Nancy, Alex, and the other students and staff at the Park. I'm also pleased to uh, present Pheasants Forever of St. Louis in Carleton County for recognition. A well, warm welcome to Phil Storstein, Matthew Brenner, Bremer, and David Lude, who are joining us this evening. Pheasants Forever recently partnered with, the Duluth, with Duluth East High School's Green Club and Agriculture Natural Resources students to create a pollinator habitat between the lake walk and the school parking lot. This location is designed to favor the attraction, survival, and reproduction of pollinators, as well as providing a way station along the monarch butterfly's migration path. This uh, pollinator project establishes a long-term ecologically sound la landscape that is adapted to the specific site and adds distinctive aesthetics which will be enjoyed by those using the lake walk. It also provides a valuable learning environment for students of Duluth East High School. Many thanks to Pheasants Forever for their partnership and support. And I understand that uh, uh, the representative from Pheasants Forever have a presentation they would like to make. Well, on behalf of uh, Pheasants Forever of St. Louis and Carleton County, we would like to officially present a check to Duluth East High School, the amount of $5,845, to fund the pollinator project uh, along the lake walk, uh, in between the lake walk and the ball field. And this also includes a three-year maintenance plan uh, to ensure the long-term success of the pollinator project. So, thank you. It's always nice recognizing um, our schools and our community and all the great projects that they're doing and all that is what we are about is what our students are doing and our staff and it's it's really neat to see you know what the kids are doing with their teachers um, just incredible projects 
incredible success. So I appreciate that as a school board member and a former teacher, knowing a lot of these people. It's very neat. All right, we are now, um, I'm going to have, we're going to go into audience, but I'm going to have Member Leffler Kemp read our vision statement and a couple of reminders um, just about civility. So, Member Leffler Kemp, go sure. ahead. Oops. Yeah, and, you know, I just want to mention that uh, this uh, statement really came through the, the first Think Kids uh, meetings that we had with the community and um, the information is in many of our literature that I'm just really uh, highlighting a couple pieces from. Uh, the purpose of Independent School District 709 is to provide a quality education that prepares all students for successful lives as global citizens in the home, community, and workplace. We will build on our shared beliefs and values of unity, high achievement, and responsible use of resources to create Duluth public schools and classrooms that are safe, supportive, and inclusive. We will work to inspire every student to achieve their potential and prepare students to lead productive, fulfilling lives as citizens of Duluth and the wider world. Thank you, Member Leffler Kemp. Um, okay, we're going to go to audience. Um, and just a reminder, um, Member Leffler Kemp will be timing with three minutes. And um, we really appreciate our audience um, keeping comments that are civil and supportive. Um, so, anyway, our first person will be um, Stefan Witherspoon. Uh, my name is Stefan Witherspoon, I'm with my mother Sharon Witherspoon, and Carl Crawford. I am the uh, second vice president of the NAACP. I'm a native of Duluth. My father was here back in 65, 1965, settled here, had a couple of churches, a restaurant, and um, we are proud to be Duluthians. We the members of the NAACP hereby resolve to undo any contribution of the policies and practices of ISD 709 that contribute to racism in our schools. The following resolutions have been adopted by the Duluth branch NAACP concerning undoing racism in the Duluth public schools. The NAACP strongly urges that the school board and administration of ISD 709 implement a K-12 curriculum designed to undo the influence of racism in the K-12 public school system. This should include the use of the Clayton Jackson McGee Memorial Inc. curriculum that the school district has long ago already approved for use in the high school syllabus. We envision an update and expansion of this curriculum as an aspect of this resolution. The NAACP also urges if not demands that ISD 709 implement an ongoing professional development policy and resulting program supporting an experiential, an, exp, an, exp, an experiential and collaborative approach to the instruction of all students, specifically those of color, toward undoing racism in the Duluth public schools. The NAACP is committed to working with the school board and administration in the continuous improvement and the quality of instruction, including the appointment of the community partners to collaborate, uh, to collaborate with professional staff to develop instructional strategies, strategies toward undoing racism. We view this effort as ongoing, uh, requiring continuous and regular public reporting to the community at large, and request that the above resolution be placed on the May 12, 2015 School Board's Education Committee. Thank you in advance for your consideration and dedication toward improving the educational and societal experiences of all of our children. Do we have any minutes left? 
I didn't sign up, but I like to say that I was looking back through my notes and uh, 2008, I think for the last, for two years, eight and 12, I, uh, eight and nine, I attended school board meetings on a regular basis for those two years. And as I reviewed my notes, we stand before you with the same request. So I urge you as, and strongly encourage you, each one of you as school board members to strongly um, consider this resolution and place it on the May 12th uh, agenda of the Education Committee and uh, invite us to come and dialogue with you and move forward and bring this forth for implementation. Thank you and have a blessed evening. You have something to say, Carl? Good evening. I want to apologize for my tardiness. There's been to, to about three or four meetings today. Unfortunately, I don't get paid, but uh, I believe in service to this community. Been doing it for many years. Has spoken to you before. Um, uh, have had some success for some of the issues we brought to you. Uh, however, in recent years, seem like our recommendations has fallen on deaf ears. We urge you, as a school board member, members, and well as the administration to take the recommendation. You have official bodies that uh, you have uh, caucated to uh, advise you on issues as it relate to the various ethnic group. Uh, we've, uh, you know, maybe been a little negligent and slow to coming to you, but it appears to me that there's been an effort to silence the community of the color by ignoring the recommendation and never letting those recommendations come before you as a body. We believe you have a responsibility. There has to be a way that we as a community can get issues to you and not have to be filtered by anyone else, that you take an aggressive action to address the issues of racism, the issues of discrimination, the issue of uh, closing the achievement gap, you have a responsibility as a board. You can mandate that the administration take care of that action and that you are responsible for ensuring that they carry that out. Year after year, we continue to see uh, very poor, slow progress in the effort of educational equity within this school district. Uh, we encourage you to, again, support the resolution going forward. We have more coming. We would like to have an open dialogue with the school board as well as the administration. And I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to speak to you today. And uh, I've talked to some of the individuals. you made commitments to me. I have not seen you fulfill those. I encourage you to take an active effort to promote educational equity racial equality and policies that equitably address the issue of racism in this district and not just punish the victim. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lauren Martell? Is that time up? Oh, did you? Briefly. Well, go ahead, Carl. Um, I just briefly want to stress the point of equity. That was mentioned in the statement that you mentioned before we came up. And equity is something that's really important. Equity means not everyone gets a book, but everyone gets a book to understand and is taught how to use that book. That's our goal, and that's not happening. So as the previous speaker spoke from the NAACP, I joined them in urging to take this matter seriously, and let's get ahead of this racism and not be reactive but proactive. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Okay, next speaker is Lauren Martell. Good evening. Again, I'd like to address the changes proposed to policy 3215. As I said last time, most auditing firms are, of course, honest and follow standards. Whipfly is a reputable firm. However, to declare nothing untoward can ever happen with a reputable firm is misguided. Just look at Enron. Arthur Anderson was highly reputable, one of the five largest auditing firms in the world. But my concern here is not illegal activity rather a too cozy pattern that may arise from the same firm being used year after year. Mr. Paulson pointed out last meeting that some budget lines in the audit have remained exactly the same for eight years. What possible harm would it do to have a new set of eyes come in periodically? Clearly a past board saw this policy as good fiscal management and I agree with them. 
How would it possibly be harmful to have more oversight, another check and balance in the system? The statement from one board member that policy 3215 is inoperable was exaggeration. It may be a bit inconvenient, but it is not inoperable. I quoted the audit manager last time, and that quote was accurate. The state will not put in a competitive bid against a private firm, but it would discuss doing the district's annual audit if the board requested them to do it. The state doesn't regularly do district audits as a matter of policy, but it will do an audit. It's simply not true that the state is getting out of the business and would flat out refuse to do one. If the state is unable to comply in a given year, then policy language should have been added to re-request the next year. How difficult is that? As far as what all the other school districts do, why doesn't this board try for once to actually set a higher bar instead of descending to the midland or lowest standard? This change is being made for the convenience of administration and some board majority members who don't want to be bothered anymore by the public or the state. It's laughable to call it an improvement. This change should raise red flags about administration reviewing all the board's policies with the people we have controlling the board at this moment. I can guarantee the public some changes are about to be made that will not be in the interest of good government and democracy. Thank you. Um, next speaker is Tim Davis. I am uh, getting over a, a sinus uh, infection, so I do apologize if my voice tends to waver. i first like to say good evening. And what I'm about to address is uh, very serious, and I take this uh, three minutes uh, very serious. I would like to first open up with a statement as follows. I am deeply saddened at the school board and the school administration. Why? Far too long, far too often, we have had community members um, come to this uh, very podium to ask why has uh, the school board have been so stagnant um, in their um, response to community of color, uh, to students of color. I'm deeply saddened. It makes me sicken that um, we can do more, and yet we still continue to drag our feet. I come before you with a very heavy heart. I've had an opportunity to reevaluate and reassess uh, my time here in Duluth. Over the past few years, I've questioned myself as a former student of one of the local high schools here. I'm deeply saddened that we have yet to move forward to address situations that have happened over the past few years, whether they are race related, whether they are uh, related to women, whether they are related to uh, any of the protected classes uh, that we uh, recognize. I'm deeply saddened as a concerned member, as a concerned taxpayer, I'm deeply saddened that we have had a very unfortunate situation that have happened at one of these high schools. What is it going to take for the board? What is it going to take for the administration to take these actions very serious? If we want to prevent the next noose incident, we need to act very quickly. We should not do lip service, and that includes me and other members of the community. We need more than just the EAC committee to report to the school board. We need more than just the superintendent 
and the assistant superintendent to stand firm and stand with the community. I am saying all of this from a very near and dear place. Understand, I'm not calling anyone out. It's a culmination of a very uh, specific uh, things that have happened. I ask with deep concern and deep respect for myself, for my family that goes to a local school in town, I ask that you strongly ask that you strongly consider this because this is really important. Enough is enough. We need to do more, and we can do more. I ask each and every last one of you and my students to my right. I ask that you can do more too. Address this because there will be another noose situation that will happen. We will have another suicide that will have happened on our watch as adults. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Are there any others over there? Okay. All right. We're going to move on to our reading communications and petitions. Superintendent, go ahead. And I have no official communications to share. <laughs> um, I wanted to start off tonight thanking uh, Mrs. Norton's art classes. It was great to see their, uh, their projects and to have so many community members here to accept their, um, their work. And first I'd like to, to share a, a big thank you to everyone who's joined us for Think Kids uh, so far this month. We have had um, 14 meetings and I appreciate the staff and the families and community members that have taken time to share their thoughts. Um, and uh, all of the people that have also shared through the online survey that's on our website. It's great to hear people from all over the community about things that are going well and about things, um, well, that aren't going so well and that can be improved. Uh, this year during Think Kids, we are presenting information about the demographic study, uh, but we're also talking about racism and harassment in our schools and in our community. And I have to tell you that we've had some, some great conversations and I look forward to sharing the compiled information with the school board and with Duluth citizens um, when we finish. There are two more uh, meetings to go. One is tomorrow night at Denfeld and the last is on Thursday night at East High School. And this has really been a wonderful way for our community to connect with the schools and we're making progress because of the feedback and the suggestions that we're receiving at those meetings. So uh, please keep coming out. Uh, it's been a great turnout so far and we look forward to uh, uh, the rest of the meetings as we wrap up those this year. On another topic, uh, the legislative uh, session is a big conversation all around the state. There are several bills regarding education and of course educational funding and per pupil funding uh, continues to be an important topic in these discussions. As a point of reference, uh, school districts across Minnesota would, it, would need at least a 3% increase in the biennium uh, to keep up with the rate of inflation. So uh, we're really trying to encourage our lawmakers to make those increases to the base funding. There are also bills regarding several um, other topics like universal programming for four-year-olds uh, that may have more financial implications for the district. We're very supportive of this programming, uh, but if they come to us without funding, we may have to make cuts in other areas and able to implement those mandates. So we want to continue to be a part of those conversations. Now, on to the topic of Nerf Wars. I, didn't, I got a little reaction over there. First, I want to be clear. Nerf Wars is not a school activity. It takes place out in the community. It is prohibited in the schools, on school property, and during school events. Uh, 
In fact, the Duluth Police Department recently held a press conference uh, to talk about the concerning behaviors associated with this game, including dangerous driving. I encourage Duluth residents who observe any unsafe activity to report it to the Duluth Police or to their community liaison officer. And I urge our young people, please, please be smart and be safe while you're playing Nerf Wars. None of us want to be the fun police. Uh, however, we all want you to stay out of harm's way uh, while you're out there having fun. With that, it is time for our monthly student reports. And I think we started with Tommy last month. So why don't we start with Jude this month? So just to briefly comment on the Nerf War thing. Um, <laughs> East's Nerf War has not started yet. It, it starts next uh, Friday. Of but course, it wouldn't be an East yeah, Nerf War. It East, would be the Eastern Duluth yeah. area. <laughs> and um, I, I'm, I am actually one of the people um, that's kind of helping lead that. Um, it's, it's changed from last year. Um, me and a couple other students uh, kind of took that leadership role um, kind of away from the people that had it last year. Um, with the intent of making it a safer, more um, appropriate kind of game, because there were there were a lot of um, not so great things that were happening last year, so uh, we did kind of um, a few, there were a few of us that really wanted to take because we figured it was going to happen uh, no matter what. It was just a matter of who's leading it and who is making that effort to actually make it safe and responsible for everyone. So. We are definitely um, aiming to ensure that people are more smart and safe with it this year. Um, so on to uh, things that have been happening at East this month. Um, at the very end of March, we had our March Madness food drive, and that ended up uh, raising $1,733, as well as collecting a total of 1,506 food items. And since that was donated uh, in late March, that's actually going to be uh, doubled to over 3000 over $3,000 and over 3,000 uh, food items as well. Um, another thing that happened, as I'm sure um, many of you know, as um, some of you actually went on the trip too, uh, the acapella choir uh, went to San Antonio and ended up winning several uh, awards down there. And the, we had two knowledgeable teams that went to compete at the state competition. Uh, we had a number of people from the uh, Duluth speech team from both East and Dunfeld compete at the state competition. Um, one actually, uh, one fourth in the entire state, um, so that was that was really cool to see that. We also um, even just today actually we had an assembly to recognize these different things, uh, including several people from the BPA and FFA, winning uh, awards at their uh, their respective competitions, and other things. Uh, student forum has been meeting at East and talking about uh, different things with the what I need period and kind of what students want to see uh, what, what they want to happen with that next year. And I know that is definitely a, a topic of conversation among um, administration and teachers and uh, everyone, but um, Student Forum definitely, a, a lot of students feel that students should have a voice in that whole conversation and that we, I think, have some pretty good ideas of what we can kind of explore to utilize and implement in the future. Um, different things uh, to comment on uh, previous speakers um, about the NAACP and uh, the just racial issues in this district. Um, only a week or so ago, the Duluth branch of the NAACP held, did hold a youth summit on racism, and uh, we saw, I, I attended that, and um, I see a number of, of East students here um, attended that as well. And we kind of had representation from a number of different uh, groups at East, including Students of the Future, Exec Board, and Association. and the whole general consensus among all the students from East and just the entire summit as well is that these are incredibly important issues that we do kind of need to be taking a little bit more seriously and addressing with a little bit more um, urgency in our district and in our schools. Um, so that was just kind of an eye-opening experience for all of us, I think, to kind of dig deeper into that whole conversation, both in a community level and within our schools and the whole district as well. Um, other things, I mean, prom is coming up on Saturday, so we're all kind of excited for that. And then two days or three days later, we do have to, the juniors have to take the ACT on Tuesday. So people are just kind of getting in and cramming for last minute studying for taking that in a week from the day, actually. And then the band and orchestra have a contest um, competition at Denfeld, I think, actually. Um, so that will be next Wednesday. And then the 
grading period will end with the physics physics classes uh, taking a field trip to Chicago. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jude. Go ahead, Tom. Okay, right. so some news from the western half of the district. Our version of the a cappella choir went to New York City via bus, which was a very long 24 hours on a bus. We had the same bus drivers. Oh, okay. Yeah, they left, yeah. They had a day off and they went to San Antonio. So that was, that was fun for us. Our theme concert for all choir, Denfeld, uh, orchestra students and band students will be taking place this Saturday at 7 and all are invited to attend. As Jude said, the ACT will be taking place next Tuesday, a week from today. Students who are not participating in the ACT, which would be all freshmen, sophomores, and seniors, are invited to participate in ACT Action Day, which is where different school groups go out and volunteer in the community. For example, our robotics team will be uh, volunteering at the Duluth Children's Museum. This Friday, there's a Trig Star competition, which is a competition put on by the uh, Land Surveyors Organization of Minnesota, and this is taking place at Lake Superior College. We participate against all the uh, competitions that are going on around the state on that day. Uh, the day before spring break, we had a organization called Know the Truth come in and talk to us about substance abuse. That was a great presentation to have for our students. And it was a great spring break, and thank you to the school district for giving us that spring break and time off from school. So, thank you. Thank you. Superintendent, do you have anything else? Or? No. no. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. It's always really very fun to hear all the different activities that are happening at all of our schools. A lot of great things, so thank you very much. We're going to go on to the report of the standing committees, and before we get to that, just I want to remind board members um, to adhere to the agenda and be consistent and respectful when dealing with staff, community, and fellow board members. And we want to be a role map model for our students and model good behavior. So, Member Harla, I'm going to have you start with the Education Committee. Go ahead. Thank Student you. Member Olson, I thought Olson, I thought you would start whistling. Because the lip dub was really great that Denfeld did. So thank you for continuing and thank you for your updates. But um, that has been stuck in my head. So you're welcome to anyone else that I handed it to. Um, thank you for the lip dub. It's really neat to see the different ways that our schools come together to tell their stories as the school. And so appreciate that it's all different students. Um, and I was thinking about, we talk a lot about how students come, all these awards that we do, and it's really great. We also need to be recognizing kids that just show up and kids that that are able to make it through the day and can make it through the hour. We have students on every end of the spectrum, and so we celebrate all of our students that are there and think about the ones that are that have a little bit of a harder time being there. That's, that's on my heart tonight as we hear from our community members that I really appreciate coming out tonight. Um, and uh, I, so that's just a, a brief moment. So um, something I think about often as, and something as an education committee that we can really begin addressing um, educational things and, and the education of our students. Um, the first item on the agenda is the um, was uh, is tabled until next month. We have a student that was on the choir trip and so he'll be speaking with us next month. Looking forward to that. Um, it's called Sick of Getting Sick and so um, looking forward to hearing him next month. Um, the next piece that we uh, heard about was from Dr. Carey, our Director of Curriculum and he, was, he talked about um, revisions to Regulation 6095 and it, it really was addressing some of the um, advancement questions that we've been having um, and also talking about route, uh, the, this um, regulation is routes to meeting state graduation assessment requirements and so um, had a conversation about that. This is a piece of the conversation in, um, as we talk about how student, what students need to do to graduate and requirements um, for advancing. And so had a good conversation at the education committee with regard to that. It is recommended that the Duluth School Board receive that information item, that item as informational. Um, with regard to grant applications, the first one that we, um, 
that we that came forward to us was the Perpich Center for the Arts Education Grant. Uh, the Perpich Center for the Arts does a lot of support uh, for our district in arts funding. It's a state grant that we do receive, and um, we do really appreciate um, that we're able to apply for these grants and that we can look at different ways um, and looking at educating the whole student through the arts. And so if we were to receive that, this is um, for professional development for teachers and administrators on standard-based collaborative arts integration, aligned curriculum, instruction and evaluation and technology needs. So uh, it was informational that that was submitted. The next um, piece was the, an externally sponsored trip request. Annette Strom, the science teacher at Ordean East Middle School, um, brought some students to Costa Rica. This was not sponsored by the Duluth schools, but um, it was an uh, informational item. Um, and it was, so it was acknowledged that it wasn't with the schools, but that students did travel to Costa Rica to do some studying and experiential learning. The next item that we had were action items. Uh, were our sets of action items. First, we had our 2015-2016 federal hard Head Start grant application. Pam Reese, our Head Start director, came to speak with our um, with the board and, and highlighted a few things. First of all, um, that we are in a new grant period for Head Start. And just for folks that didn't know, in Minnesota, uh, our district is unique. Usually, Head Start is something that is separate from a school district, and we actually house Head Start within our school district. This is something. Um, it's a really great evidence-based opportunity that we have to have students uh, come pre-kindergarten to get to know the school, get to know um, the school system, and then be supported um, from pre-K um, into stepping into kindergarten. Um, our staff are highly trained, highly supported, and um, do a lot for do a lot in supporting our our littlest ones that are able to come through the school. A few th highlights that she ma that she made. Um, and this is important. She highlighted that because this is within the district, we're able to pay a living wage to the teachers that are there and uh, that are teaching the students. And when uh, when Pam goes around across, when she goes across the state to learn about and had to connect another Head Start programs. They have staff that are coming in and out. They train early childhood staff and then they go to someplace else that pays better. And I am proud to know that and proud to stand with a district that's paying people a living wage and feel that it's, you know, it's important for all organizations in our community to be doing that. And so glad that our employees are stable, are, uh, can stay with us because we, we pay them. Um, a quality wage and they are able to stay with us and I've heard from many folks to say if I could work in early childhood in Duluth it would be in Head Start so um, thank you for them for that so the next piece that we have um, is just they're looking at um, some some things that are affecting our Head Start in our community are some of our community housing instability, especially in the cold months of the winter. They saw a number of families that had that moved out of the community, and because heat is really expensive here, and so there there was a blip in numbers where they kind of fell under, and so they're they're working on an action plan and working to um, working alongside families to understand um, how how to support families that are struggling and you know here this it's another another way that the district is able to partner with families and Pam um, gave a full report on that and then they also highlighted the Head Start dinner that is coming up that is an 80s theme and so glad to know that that's something that um, the families within Head Start can celebrate and join together um, with big hair and <laughs> lots of 80s wear so just it's a, a really great celebration. I had an opportunity to go to it last year um, with some other members of the board, and I really appreciate um, the Head Start, all, all just all the work that's going on in Head Start, um, and knowing that investing in early childhood is one of um, our investments in in, the, in lessening the achievement gap. So it is recommended that the Duluth School Board accepts and approve the federal Head Start grant proposal for fiscal year 15-16 for submission. The next piece, um, oh, okay, we'll do the resolution, we'll, Chair, so I move that resolution, um, sorry, jump to that, thank you. I had it here, <laughs> just, thank you. Page 15, so waving, so we will jump to page 15, a request for suspension of the policy 6160, field trips and, re uh, and resolution E1110-10-28, 28, 
26, waiving liability of foreign travel within the, ex within the exception of Canada. So um, a number of our students and staff are looking to travel to Dalian, China uh, about a year ago. Uh, and Assistant Superintendent Crawford uh, reported this to the board. About a year ago, there was a contingent of uh, students and teachers that came from Dalian, China and experienced um, life in the Duluth Public Schools. Um, they stayed with families, they experienced our community, they experienced an everyday life and when they left they said they they wanted us to come and visit them and gave the district a $7,000 grant, $7,000 US grant to um, in a, a, in a little way to partner to come over and so we'll, we're, um, we'll be sending a small group of students uh, or a small group of students that are able will be um, traveling this summer. And so um, this is waiving liability of foreign travel with the exception um, of Canada. I know in the past, um, the re interesting note, they say exception of Canada because we are a border country and so they can go to Canada. But glad to know that we are able to reach out and um, give students an opportunity to um, connect around the world and understand. Um, all, all different parts of the world that really opens up their eyes. There are some opportunities to have support for students within some funding um, that was given to them. So I'll move this resolution E-11-10-2826 and it says on the bottom November 16th 2010 of, of our paper it's, but I'm actually gonna yeah, say April uh, 20th first, first yeah. April 21st. Second. So it's not a resolution then? Okay, so it's just part of the whole thing. Okay. Okay. So we're wa so I'll I'll say that so it's um, on it's record. So we're waiving the policy that was passed November sixteenth, twenty ten, so that our students are able to okay. um, do this. This is a one time waiver. If we ever need to do this in the future, we're not changing the policy. We're just waiving it for this specific instance. So, so, Melinda, so let me just interrupt. So, Melinda, we don't even have to. It's just going to be read as part of the complete agenda. Okay. Sorry, because it was under a resolution. Thank you. Okay, Member Harlan, you just want to keep going then? I'll, I'll keep going. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, the next piece was our revised ISD 709 2015-2016 school year calendar that's reflecting the grade period changes. This is a, um, a big change, but a good change for our high schools. Um, going to be from uh, six, six grading periods to four grading periods in the high school. This is something that's already happening in the middle school and, and will now happen in the high school. A few questions um, that did come forward on, on so first of all, it, uh, teacher, this has been something that's been talked about for years and is a good feedback loop that we have. We, um, in talking with our curriculum director about it, he said he kept hearing about it, people were hearing about it and then they talked about it and did some research and it made sense to do it. And so they worked, they're working with teachers and administrators um, and now are, we'll be getting the word out to families that will be um, having this, um, this happen. A lot of what happened was that when there are the breakdown of three um, grade periods within the, within the semester, it was hard, you, teachers would turn around a grade and just like the falling of where of where conferences met, the feedback loop um, and being able to get things, um, it was just, the, the schedule wasn't working. There were many different things that, that came to be a part of that. That being said, one of the questions that I had and other board members had and community members had were, what are we doing to ensure that, that there is continual updating of grades, that, are, that teachers are on top of, um, making sure that that uh, online gradebooks are updated and that is something that is being discussed and addressed within the quality steering committee and is also um, they're working alongside administration for that so um, it's recommended that the Duluth School Board accept and approve the recommended revised change to the calendar um, for 2015-2016 school year and that the only change for that calendar is the from six grading periods to four and then we have a few diploma requests. Um, the following students have completed all high school graduation requirements and should be awarded a diploma. Um, so Jaquan Donald Wall Williams and Lexi Rickford. And it is recommended that the Duluth School Board accept and approve the above diploma requests. And Ch um, Madam Chair, I move this report of the Education Committee. Thank you, Member Harla. Could I have a second, please? Yeah. 
Seconded by Member Leffler Kemp. Um, is there any discussion? Uh, Member Welty. So I'd like to withhold action uh, uh, 2B. 2B? 2B. Action uh, items 2B. <laughs> or not 2B. <to> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I know Dr. Carey, go ahead. You want to just wanted to clarify one point on the grading period changes to the calendar. Um, Member Harla discussed the high school change, but there's also the change at the elementary level going from the quarters to semesters. And the intent of that was to ensure that our grading periods align with our major benchmark assessments so that that information is current when teachers meet with parents so that they can communicate the most current information to parents about their children's progress. So just wanted to make sure we didn't omit that part, that portion from the report. Thank you. Um, member, member Westholm? Yeah, could I withhold 2C, which we've just been discussing? Yes. Okay, that's it. Member Johnston? I'd just like to withhold the uh, general information, number one. What, which one? The whole thing. I'll have number one. Oh, um, well, this, the first part isn't there just because Tim wasn't here. Um, and let's see, member Leffler Kemp? Uh, 2A. Okay, well, we'll start out with number one, Member Johnston. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just want to emphasize again what we heard from the NAACP. I think this is an issue that we have to address as a school board. The school board has not addressed this issue, and much of the other community has. Uh, I think that it is, it's overdue for us to do that, so I would ask that this be put on next month's agenda so we can have a discussion on that, which I think is quite heartfelt by the community. So I hope uh, I'm asking the chair and the superintendent to put that on next month. Thank you. And I want to thank the community for bringing that up as well. It's a very important issue, very heartfelt. Thank you for hearing from you. Uh, let's see, Member Leffler Kemp. Go okay. ahead. Okay. No, I'm two. So 2A, uh, which is on the Federal Head Start grant, and this is just really informational. Um, I serve as a, a school board rep on the Head Start Policy Council, and I know we have some members of the Policy Council here, and I just want to say um, that part of the, the grant application and the leadership of the school board meeting with the federal grant person from Chicago um, uh, it was myself, uh, Judy Saligapunko, and uh, Annie Harla. Um, we really uh, highlighted about the important role that the Policy Council plays, um, the, and the Policy Council is made up of parents uh, as well as staff, plays um, with the, the Head Start program here in Duluth. And so I just wanted to kind of mention that and, and also mention um, uh, a thank you to the letter to the editor that was in the paper this week um, highlighting Head Start uh, in our community. And um, uh, yeah, just wanted to mention those two things. Okay, Member Welty 2B. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know that I recognize this resolution. Uh, I'm sure it was uh, something that I must have skipped over, but it, it does confuse me. So, uh, uh, Linda, I'll, I'll ask you a question about it. But I did have a, another question, because we did talk about, the, uh, uh, about the, the general issue, which I think I understand. And I, I asked our, uh, our, our, our CFO, Mr. Hansen, if um, we were going to be uh, um, it any liability when the students and uh, and and other people go off to Dalian, China, and he he explained that what we would do is is purchase a rider uh, that would probably be covered during our discussion uh, by the uh, the the revenues that the people who are going on this trip 
uh, we're providing a rider that would cover the liability for the district. And I just wonder if that has taken place if we have purchased a rider at this point. See. Uh, Mr. Hansen can probably verify this, but I believe we're waiting for you to take an action saying that we can take the trip first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, we have had conversations with the insurance company, so that's, and that's that would imminent. be uh, set up and um, covered. Okay. So. Now, because I don't quite understand how the resolution, resolution works, this is listed as a resolution. Uh, is the intention that this be a resolution that we pass tonight? Or this is not a resolution that we passed tonight. Hold on. This it, this is the original resolution that's um, that says that we cannot take foreign travel. So you're actually waiving this resolution. Where where does it say that we are waiving? It, that when it says waiving liability on foreign travel with the exception of Canada, but but is there a, a, a resolution to waive? that liability because if we don't vote on this I don't see a resolution waiving liability just that we've had a discussion administration requested to suspend so we will we'll have a motion to suspend right. this yeah. policy correct right. okay has anybody made that motion yet it's part of the whole thing it's part of the recommendation then. yeah but has somebody is <laughs> is by, there a motion to that effect by, in here by moving the done. report it, it will act that. as a, exactly okay. All right. yeah. okay. All right, um, next one is 2C member Westholm. Yeah, I just had a couple of questions about C. Um, I, you know, we're going from uh, three back to two per semester, right? Grading periods in the high schools, is that okay? Right. And I think I was working as a principal when we went from two to three, and I'm have we have we reviewed why we went from two to three way back when? And, and mm -hmm. I, I've I've forgotten what was the what was our rationale back then. Who wants to say yes? Go ahead, Member Murdoch. Thank you. Um, when they did this for the semesters, uh, the, this is prior to Infinite Campus, prior to uh, any of us owning computers other than a six inch screen from the Macs and we didn't have them at home. And the idea was, the purpose was uh, to increase the amount of com communication between the parents and the school district. So they would get, during a semester, uh, they would get three reports, uh, uh, six reports for the whole year. Now with infinite, infinite Campus, and again I understand there's some problems with some people not having uh, on computers, but with Infinite Campus and, and other systems that we now have, um, it's going to be a lot easier for the teachers. It's going to be a lot easier for the students. We were, we were testing so much more under the shortened period, and uh, it would literally take some day, instructional days out because we had to get tests in so we could get the grades in. And uh, I just think this is a wise move uh, to, to go back to a, a, a longer reporting uh, period. Yes. Oh, go ahead, Member Weston. That, that does refresh my memory on this whole discussion because I was part of it. Um, what I worry about is are we going to, things being what they are, the way that uh, things happen, uh, are we going to go back to students not being, even though parents have more access than they used to have, is there the risk, and I'm sure we discussed it, of going back to not enough notification? Because I, I remember that happening too. Uh, sometimes people just weren't letting parents know until almost the end of a, of a quarter that their kids weren't doing very well, and they got upset with that, so. Go ahead, Dr. Carey. And that's been part of the conversation between the assistant superintendent and I is how we work with principals um, to communicate with them since they have direct oversight over teachers in terms of how they're working with their teachers to make sure what the expectations are around communication and reporting of grades. And so that's part of the conversation that ties into this change in grading periods to ensure that we're not going backwards in terms of our communication with families. Okay. Member Harla. I was actually going to ask um, member, student member Goosens. He had some good points at the meeting, so I see your light is on. So. Go 
had student representative questions. Right. I just wanted to say that um, like pretty much any student that I've talked to is definitely pleased that we're moving to four grading periods per year instead of six because everyone was kind of confused about why it was six in the first place since it seemed that everyone was basically around the state and even country was pretty much at, at four. That was kind of the standard. And as, as far as uh, the like, concerns about communication and feedback with students and just their grades and everything, like I know it's certainly not the case for 100% um, of people, but I, I would, from what I've seen, the, the majority of people um, really do kind of keep up on their grades, at least. Um, I, mean, I mean, I know some people just are constantly checking their phone on Infinite Campus and, or checking their, their computer or even going and talking to their teacher or checking the computer in their win class or something. There's just, there's a lot of checking your grades on Infinite Campus. So I, I think that for the most part, we don't really have to worry, it seems, about that, at least on the, the high school level of um, just feedback with grades and, and with parents also being able to um, log into their student's account and see that as well, too. So I just want to comment that. Thank you. And I do have to say that I heard the last couple of years from a lot of people, especially if you have a student that fails a t or doesn't do well on a test, it pretty much affects their grade for the whole six weeks. So this way they have a little bit more of a chance to catch up if they, you know, maybe they were sick or something. So I think it really is good. Okay. Oh, Member Westholm, go ahead. I just wanted to thank uh, getting our students' perspective because that's mm -hmm. always important to this kind of discussion because you're the ones on the other end of this thing. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're ready to vote on the entire Education Committee. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries unanimously. Now we're going to move on to um, the HR Committee report, and that would be Member Mernicke. Um, hold on. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the HR Committee met on Tuesday, April 21st. Staffing report items, certified long-term sub, one, certified retirement, 15, non-certified leave, seven, non-certified permanent increase, one, non-certified resignation, seven, and non-certified retirements, four, a rather short list. Other action items uh, will be approving the contract for public relations coordinator, Kathleen Kaufman. B, approval of individual contract for assistant superintendent for Amy Strzecki. And C, we tabled at the March meeting, and it's still on the table unless it's the, the uh, desire of the school board it remains on the table. There are no other informational items, no, and there's no, nothing for the future. <laughs> I move the Human Resources Committee report. Thank you, Member Mernicke. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Member Leffler Kemp. All right, is there any discussion? Uh, Member Welty. I'd, um, I'd like to uh, ask some questions about items 2A and B. Okay. Uh, Member Harala. I would like to, I would move to table item 2C, um, the approval to modify the District Civil Service Act. Oh, it is table. Oh, sorry. I, I think we don't. Yeah, we don't. We have don't have to. to I just wanted to tabled. make sure that it was tabled, and that uh, wanted to. Then I'd like to. Just, I'm just. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Is there anything else? Okay. Oh, Member Leffler Kemp, you had. Go ahead. Um, I would just like to make a comment about C. Okay. Um, let's go to number two. Um, Member Welty, 2A. Uh, yes, we, we have uh, two contracts. I also withheld uh, item B. Um, we have apparently just hired, uh, notified a, uh, uh, someone that we are intending to hire her as our new assistant superintendent. I presume the contract, well, I don't know if the contract has, has been consummated at this point yet or not, but I, I'd like to see it when it happens. Um, and. We have been getting the uh, the bargaining unit contracts, which I appreciate. Um, I've not seen the individuals, and I don't know how many individual contracts there are, but um, since I'm kind of collecting contracts, I would like to have uh, uh, the administration provide me with a copy of individual contracts as we adopt them. Just, just a request. Superintendent? Uh, you did get copies of those contracts at the HR committee. Complete? Yep. Um, can I? 
I, I did want to just mention that um, Amy Starzecki is the candidate for the assistant superintendent position. Um, she was chosen from a pool of 21 candidates. Uh, she is currently serving as superintendent in Floodwood, Minnesota. Also has experience um, in administration in Deer River, Minnesota. Um, we had a very thorough interview and screening process, um, had a strong team of people interviewing, and Amy really uh, rose to the top of that group, and we are excited to be having her um, on board and starting in July. And we're going to lose our current assistant superintendent, so... Hmm. Not yet. Not yet, I know. Not yet. Okay, Member Johnston, you have a question? Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm also on 2B. Again, I've heard a lot of good things about uh, the person that was picked. I do want to, again, we brought, talked about this a little bit in the committee, but I think that uh, I would have liked to have seen the school board uh, have some participation, at least to be asked to participate in that selection <laughs> panel. Uh, it's particularly important now since a uh, likely possibility we may be losing our superintendent and this assistant superintendent may likely be our acting superintendent and just because of issues like that I think it would have been nice to um, involve the school board a little bit more and it would have been nice not to read about it in the paper before we were notified. Member Harla? Um, are we on 2A and 2B? I'm just just, okay, I so guess we are. I just wanted to make sure to highlight so uh, the approval of the individual contract for our public relations coordinator and just wanted to thank um, Katie Kaufman for all of her work and a lot of the Think Kids meetings that we've been at. I've heard a lot of great things about at almost, I, all of them I've heard. I really appreciate the number of ways that I'm communicated with from the district, whether it's um, an all district email or a community wide email, the number of emails. So we just really appreciate all the work that she is, all the work that she does and that she does on behalf of our district. Really appreciate that. And also want to urge that part of the discussion too was the hope to get some either interns or additional support so we can have more um, uh, of a team for telling the story of our district. Superintendent. Uh, I know we're kind of bouncing around on topics <laughs> here. Um, uh, I, I'll respond to yours. Uh, I too have heard a lot about communication and how people have appreciated that communication. And I uh, thank uh, Katie Kaufman for her efforts in in organizing all of that, and uh, that we appreciate her. And also that um, I appreciate that board members have been out at Think Kids meetings too. I think I've seen just about everyone, um, and some more than others. And uh, I appreciate you being out there. Uh, going to the communication and the hiring process for the assistant superintendent, um, really the, the school board is very active in hiring the superintendent, uh, but has not been a part of the hiring process for others. Uh, I do want to point out, though, that we did share uh, that um, Amy Starzecki was the candidate before it went public. Uh, as usual with the board, I tried to notify you and then district staff and then the public after that um, in layers of communication. So um, I just wanted to note that I, I did send that out before the public knew. Thank you. Okay, we're going to vote on the entire HR committee report. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries unanimously, um, and we can move on to the business committee report, and that is Member Westholm. Okay, uh, the business committee report uh, has following components to it this month, and we look at number one, a financial report. Um, 1A is, a fi is the financial report. B is approval of payment of claims. C, budget revisions. D, wire transfers. E, investment transactions. F, Wadham projections, and G, fundraisers. Uh, number two is bids, RFPs, and quotes reports, and there was one bid, and that was for historical Central High School retaining wall improvements, and that was a bid for $375,000 from Hovland, Inc. Uh, no 
RFPs. Uh, quotes, we had uh, six quotes, I think. The first one is quote 4198, district-wide annual inspection service to boilers. And that was for $18,360. And the recommendation is we approve entering into that contract with Jamar Company. Uh, quote two, district-wide cement masons labor for $17,710. And it's recommended that we approve entering into a contract with Hovland Inc. for that contract. Uh, three is a quote uh, for $16,898, and that's for district-wide annual inspection and testing of fire alarm, sy fire alarm systems, and that's with Northland Fire and Safety. And that's recommended that we enter into a contract with uh, that company. And quote number four, district-wide glass replacement services, and that's for $21,600 with Superior Glass, and it's recommended that we approve entering into a contract with Superior Glass. Uh, number five is, is a quote for district-wide annual testing and maintenance of sprinkler systems. That's pretty important, obviously. And that's for $5,005, and that's with Brothers Fire Protection. And it's recommended that we enter into a contract with that company. And no, number six, replacement roller shade material at various schools. I'm not sure I, I know exactly what that is. And that's for uh, $99,663 with Belanger, Inc., and it's recommended that we approve uh, entering into a contract with that firm. And then placeholder historical central high school access control system. And I don't know if we have information on that or not. If we're just it's in our, it's in our okay, it's in our green folder. Okay. And then we go to number three and policies and regulations. And we do have three here. And A is policy 1098 gifts to employees and school board members. And that's attached in our in our. Uh, in our booklet uh, on page 54, and it's, and it's the second reading this month. And it's recommended that we approve policy 1098, uh, that, that uh, policy for gifts to employees and school board members. Uh, although there were a couple of changes, uh, minor ones, but those are noted. Uh, B, policy 3215, state auditor's review of finances. And that uh, state auditor's review of finances, that's the second reading of this. And it's recommended that we approve that policy and uh, with some recommended changes also to that one. And C is bylaw 9115, school district elections, and the recommended changes, and this is the first reading of this one, and attach are some recommended changes to that bylaw uh, for school board elections for the first uh, uh, reading. Contracts, uh, number four, contracts, change orders, and leases. So contract so one for 4A1 is a canvas that attaches a letter of invitation for order for Kansas for learning management system software, and that's for $126,000 uh, for a five-year period, and it's recommended that we approve the purchase of this software. Uh, two, fuel education, contract with fuel education for $42,000 uh, for online educational products and services, and it's recommended that we approve that contract. And we'll change orders in a B or leases. And then we go to the back side. And uh, resolution, we have a, a couple here. Resolution B-4-15-5257 acceptance of donations to Duluth Public Schools. And it's uh, recommended that we approve that resolution. Okay. Can yeah. Um, so you're moving that. Can yep. I have a second? Uh, Seconded by Member Mernicke. Is there any discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor of Resolution B-4-15-3257 say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries unanimously. Continue on, Member Westholm. And then B is Resolution B-4-15-3258, and that's uh, 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 Release and Pledge of Collateral. And uh, it's recommended that we approve that resolution. Okay, can I have a second, please? Um, that's seconded by Member Mernicke again. Is there any discussion? Mr. Westholm moved it. Yes. Yes. He did. Yeah. Um, okay, is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution B4 15 3258 say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries unanimously. Continue on, Member Weston. Okay, and the third one, Resolution B-4-15-3256, authorizing a joint powers agreement with the City of Duluth for construction of multi-use Duluth tra Traverse Trail on Lincoln Park Middle School property. And uh, 
I, I will call on uh, Member Leffler Kemp to read the details of, of that one. It's on what page is that on, Rosie? It's on page 74. Okay. And again, this is resolution B4153256, authorizing a joint powers agreement with the City of Duluth for construction of a multi use Duluth Transverse Trail on Lincoln Park State, Lincoln Park School property. And whereas in March 2012, the Duluth School Board approved resolution B312-2986, authorizing a joint powers collaborative agreement between the City of Duluth and Independent School District 709 to establish and operate jointly used facilities and services for the citizens of Duluth to eliminate duplication of effort and maximize the effectiveness of the services provided. Under this agreement, the collaboration on programs and joint use of facilities would be memorialized in joint powers collaborative specific purpose agreements as addendums to this master agreement. And whereas the City of Duluth, as its sole cost and expense, is constructing a multi-use mountain biking Duluth Transverse Trail, a portion of which is intended to cross school district property at the Lincoln Park Middle School, as shown on Exhibit A. The City, therefore, proposes to ex execute a specific purpose agreement to facilitate the development of the school trail portion on school property by the City. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District 709, St. Louis County, that the Joint Powers Agreement for the construction of the multi-use Duluth Transfer Trail on Lincoln Park School property well, as presented at the April 13, 2015 Business Community Committee meeting and attached hereto is hereby approved. So can I have Member Westholm, would you will, move, move that? that? Move that okay. resolution. Member Westholm moved and seconded by Member Harla. Okay. Is there any discussion on this issue? Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution B4-15-3256 say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries unanimously. Okay, Member Westholm, go ahead and complete the business report. Okay, then we get to uh, number six, informational items, um, expenditure contracts, uh, Superintendent Gronseth, uh, and I don't think there's anything that uh, Director of Business and Finance, if there's anything you want to comment on, uh, on that or not, okay. And that brings us to B, revenue contracts. There were none. C, other contracts. Again, Superintendent Gronseth or, uh, Super, or Director of Business and Finance has signed a number of contracts. I don't believe there's anything that needs to be commented on at this time. And D, uh, facilities management capital project status report and Carrie Leiter uh, is here, and it, I don't know if, if uh, Carrie, if you have anything to, nothing to add on that one. Okay, and then uh, F or E, contract signed in relation to the long range facilities plan, and again, Carrie uh, Leiter will be present to answer questions regarding the attached report. And finally, Westminster Church property acquisition status slash Denfeld area land use update. And a uh, number of future items, but uh, at Woodland Hills lease, fiscal year 16 budget approval, C, uh, resolution for election year change, and D, discussion regarding community use of facilities. And that's the rather lengthy uh, business uh, re report. So Thank I move uh, the business co uh, committee report for this month. Second. Thank you, Member Westholm. And that's been seconded by Member Harala. All right. Is there any discussion? Let's see. Member Welty. Yes, I'd like to uh, withhold under Policies and Regulations 3B. Say that again. Which one? 3B. 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 Okay. And Member Johnston? I would like to withhold uh, 1B and 1F and 2A. And I'd like to request a vote, separate vote for 3B and 3C. Okay, we'll start out with um, 1B, Member Johnston. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
First, I'd like to thank uh, the business people for sending out a note there. I had a question about the James A. Lundberg thing for 2400 Thank you for sending that out. It, would, it does... I would like just to say that I think when we have things, for example, legal issues, I would certainly would expect that the district, the school board, would be informed about those type of issues. And uh, so I would request in the future that we are informed when things like this happen when have to do with legal legalities and, of course, costs. So I'd actually ask that we be informed in the future. Um, looking at the payment of claims, I, uh, I looked at this and I'm going to bring up a concern that I often have is that we spent this year $150,000 on legal fees. That is the highest since I've been on the board for legal fees for non-land related things, for example, in bonds. In the past, while we're building the red plan, we had a lot of expenditures on that. If you This year we didn't have hardly any. And in fact, our legal fees are almost twice as high this year than we have had since I've been on the board. I uh, want to again point out that in the last year, $140,000 of those went to uh, Kevin Rupp. Uh, and since this board has taken efforts to remove me as a board, we have uh, spent an estimated $150,000. Uh, people know that this is just the tip of the iceberg and that this money is going to be going way up, I suspect. I think it's a shame that uh, this school board is hiring that much lawyers for personal vendettas by the superintendent and the chairs against me. I would hope that the community says enough is enough and that money should be spent for schools, not personal vendettas by the superintendent. Okay, that's it. Okay, let's go on to A F or one A one F. Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Just a question. Uh, there was a reduction this month in our attendance. Any comments at all uh, why that may have happened this month? We, you know, two months ago, we also had a big reduction. And there were some um, some comments or on that. And do we have any this month? If not, I can go on and make my own comments. Any. If there's no explanations on why that we had such a sharp decrease. Uh, Member Johnston, members of the board, um, we have, I guess as we've discussed before, there, the reasons are, are uh, quite varied. Um, I would say that uh, just in a, a brief look at the uh, uh, March explanation sheet, um, we have um, uh, 41 students that uh, were part of the 15-day drop. In other words, they uh, had no attendance record for 15 days, and that's an automatic drop per state regulations. Um, there's also um, uh, 43 students that uh, transferred without moving. Some of those certainly can include um, adjudication situations where um, they're attending somewhere else um, but yet the family uh, has not moved. That can be part of it. Um, the uh, um, Another larger item here is we had uh, uh, nearly, nearly 30 students, uh, 28, uh, that did move out of the district um, and, uh, and so there, it, it's Quite a combination of things. Um, another 13 in addition to that, uh, so that's 41 in total. That 13 of which moved out of state, um, and so 41 total moved uh, somewhere out of the district, either within Minnesota or beyond the uh, boundaries of Minnesota. So, 
quite a number of things. Uh, basically, I would note that we're back to, in terms of a projection at this point, we're back to roughly the same level that we were uh, in the February report. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, again, we uh, kind of see how the, the next couple of months goes. Thank you, Mr. Hansen. Um, Member Harla? Um, Can I? Sure. Is this related the same thing? Because I yes. remember Harla had her <clears throat> light on. Go ahead. Uh, again, we've since last month we lost 76 more enrollment. I guess I would question whether it was because of people have moved out. Uh, of that, the changes that we had since last month, all of those, virtually all of those, came from the high school, the 912. Obviously, if people have moved out, it would be not just in high school. We lost uh, 83 students in high school. I guess a request that I would have is I'd like to know which high school lost those. Was it Denfeld or was it East? I would also like to point out here, again, I point this out because this is, a, I think, a critical item for our school. This, at 8350, this is by far the lowest number that we've ever had. I don't know since when, since I would guess probably about 1925. Uh, we've lost 243 since the start of this year. Um, again, our budget was predicting about losing about 200. It looks like we're losing more than we were, were projecting on our budget proposals, our preliminary budget proposal. And I also want to point out that uh, since the superintendent has been on board, we've now lost 535 students, which is equivalent to about ten five million million in revenue we've lost. I don't think that this is, I think this is a crisis in our school. Again, you know, why are we losing so many students? I certainly hear that we've maybe lost some by people moving out. But since it's uh, virtually all from the high school, not from other parts of the school, I think there's other reasons. Again, we hear from our parents, I hear from my constituents all the time about large class sizes, the achievement gap, graduation rates, uh, our poor test scores, or East versus the West disparity, and of course the lawsuit that uh, everybody seems to be tromping forward to do. And of course now we have our racial incident. These are all the issues that all of those things should be addressed, and they're not being addressed by this administration nor by this board. A reminder to board members to keep their um, comments civil and not attack our, our staff members. Member Harla, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to point out that during the Think Kids conversations, there um, one of the women, one of the statistics that the superintendent brings up in his demographic study presentation are the number of students in last year, and I don't have the numbers off the top of my head um, or the document in front of me, but of the number of students each year that go out and come into our schools, whether it's for our residential programs, but also that Duluth does have a significantly high transient population, people that are moving around, moving out of state. Um, though some of the things that um, Member Johnston brings up um, are a piece of our story. There's additional pieces too with with um, inner board dynamics that, that that we can look at, but I think we all have a part in that. Um, you included Mr. Johnston. So I would say that as we, as we look um, at our Wadham projections, you know, we need to continue trumpeting our story for our schools um, and addressing some of those, addressing those um, critical pieces, but also knowing the community that we are serving as schools. Member Westholm. Uh, ask um, Mr. Hansen, what was the number? I didn't jot it down. The 15 day drops this so far. I got it. 41. Okay. That that was for the uh, month of March. Okay. And my recollection, I remember that <laughs> uh, very well, uh, especially when I was an assistant principal in my job big part of my job was keeping track of attendance issues with and I know that with those kids uh, we would make numerous attempts between counselors administrators sometimes teachers uh, or uh, uh, attendance office staff we'd sometimes have five ten or more 
attempts at contacts from phone calls to calling relatives to anybody we could find to see if we could track these kids. So I believe the schools still make a lot of efforts to to try to uh, keep these kids or get information about these kids and then and then invite them back and see if we can get them in school. But it's it's tough because a lot of times there's really tough things going on with the family. So that's just a commentary on my part. Okay, Superintendent, you want to make a comment about that? Um, you know, I just want to bring it back to the, the data, a lot of the data that I've been sharing with Think Kids and that the was part of the demographic study as well. You know, if we go back 20 years in Duluth, we had over 25,000 students. Uh, if we go 10 years back, we had 10,000 students. Uh, so we have have dropped about 1,700 students in the last 10 years. Uh, that was right in line with what demographers said would happen uh, 10 years ago. Uh, granted, a little bit below what they said. Um, and now the demographer says we will continue to drop, uh, but very slightly because we're stabilizing. It is uh, thought that we would be within 100 students of where we are now uh, within the next five years. We are going to see some differences. Uh, there's a, a large cohort in our elementary right now that we will see go through the entire system. Um, so we are going to see our elementary numbers drop and our middle high and high schools rise and then drop as that large cohort goes through. Um, I encourage people to go to our website and check out all of the demographic information that is available on there. It goes uh, 10 years history and also has five years of projections. So people can look at the maps, all of the data, all of the numbers for all of our schools uh, going back and forward in time. Thank you. Member Walty. Uh, I know that a number of members of the school board wince when the uh, discussion of the Wadhams comes up, and I can understand that. We want to keep things positive. But uh, I, think, I think the things that we've said here, many of us need to be said pro and, and con. Um, I particularly like the uh, comments of, of uh, former Denfeld Principal Westholm, because I do remember as a school board member uh, talking about uh, the loss of students, and I have uh, a recollection that... Uh, uh, when we agonized about those those students, uh, uh, we were we were informed that there were great efforts taken to uh, to, to keep those kids. I know we had some dropout specialists uh, that uh, went went out on the streets looking for kids, trying to bring them back. And uh, but art is art is right. Uh, five hundred thirty-five kids may be close to five million dollars. Um, that means that uh, our our pool and program shrink if, if a family which is very transient, is about to leave. Uh, there may be nothing we can do about, about that, but, uh, but maybe transience is something that uh, is encouraged when kids don't have a, a, the kind of experience they like to have in the schools. So um, I, I think maybe what I'd like to jump to next is just a comment to, uh, to, uh, to Bill Hansen. I, I, appreciated getting some details about where the the last batch of students of the last month went I, I'm not sure that that's been a regular part of our of our uh, our discussion of Wadhams but I think that the the ability that this board can keep track of where kids go we would be better off I'd also like to have a discussion about what we do do especially at the high schools to try to talk kids into staying what what efforts we uh, we take along those lines and uh, uh, I think art is also correct that our and member Harla that uh, inner board dynamics plays a part in the atmosphere that we're, we're dealing with and uh, I wish I could I wish we we had better uh, inner board dynamics um, but I think we need to have a, a long discussion about this and, and and obviously we're not prepared to do that now except you know just kind of grab a hold of, of things as I just have and as others have I think our district needs to try to figure out some sort of a uh, um, an, an attempt to figure out how to reduce these 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 lost kids, and I, I think that would be a welcome discussion for us to have. Uh, I know we've talked about having uh, exit uh, interviews, find out why children leave, um, 
and perhaps if we started doing some more proactive work trying to uh, develop a way of keeping kids in, we, we could stop having to wince every time we take a look at uh, a downturn in the water projection. So uh, I would hope that our administration uh, can get some ideas and put this on an agenda and, and uh, uh, you know, we can get past <laughs> All the all the unhappiness when we talk about Wadhams, but that will probably take something proactive. And, and I think Member Johnston's, I, I guess the complaint would be he he doesn't see that proactive uh, uh, work going on, or has not been informed to date what we're doing to stop it. And so I would much I would welcome uh, uh, a discussion along those lines. Member Johnston. Sure, I'll just be uh, uh, real quick. Um, just some clarifications on the past demographic studies. Back nine years ago when we did the red plan, their, their prediction was nine, 500 to 1,000 over what it is now, depending on what the low or their high projections. So we're, we're 500 below their low projections, so the demographers were not correct. I'd just like to point out also that our latest demographic study that we just got here a month, a month and a half ago, they predicted that this year I think we were only going to lose, I believe it was, 25 students. They predicted that with 99% certainty, and we've already lost uh, 200. They were they're already off. So I think that uh, does. Um, I would very I would be very glad. Uh, last month we had a, I think about a 10 increase, and I said that was great. I would be very much glad to have an increase. So we'd went up to bring this up, but it keeps going down, 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 and down. Member Leffler Kemp. Sure. Um, thank you, uh, Chair Punko. I, I guess I just want to make a comment that. Um, uh, in response to uh, Member Welty. Um, I don't believe we wince when we talk about Wadham. Um, I believe that uh, many of us uh, see the issues that, um, are that you bring up around Wadham being addressed every day in our schools, every day with our directors, every day with our staff, in a variety of ways. And uh, it's, it's frustrating when uh, misinformation at times is given out or, uh, uh, you know, comments uh, aren't uh, kind of fully uh, vetted about information about what is going on. And so I just, I guess, um, I see it differently uh, than you, Member Welty. Okay, we're going to move on to bids. Oh, Member Mernicke? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even see that. All right. I wasn't going to comment, uh, but I'm going to. Um, as an activities director, I had to be one of the signatories when people dropped out of school, and they'd bring this form to me. Um, I'm going to make this very short. Mr. Westholm can back me up on this, but we don't have to, is the schools do a lot to try to keep kids in school. They do a lot. Well, we can mention the STARS program, we can mention what the counselors do, we can mention what social workers do, uh, and it's just not the Duluth district. It's, it's any of the larger schools are, are having these problems, but we should look into this. Uh, I want to tell you from my heart is that I've seen some people work very, very hard to keep kids in school, and it hasn't worked some kids and it's sad it's really sad but there are successes too we've had a lot of great successes it's just part of our society today but again I want to reiterate that if we had our two high school principals here right now um, they would tell you that we spend a lot of time and a lot of effort trying to keep these kids on the right path thank you okay we're gonna move on to bids um, to a member Johnston Thank you, Madam Chair. A question of which I asked of Mr. Leiter at the committee meeting and who's going to check on was the retaining walls for this building, did you figure if that was included in the 
red plan funding that five million dollars that the board passed here a few months ago member johnson members of the board i'm sorry i i i had looked up the information i thought i had sent it out but perhaps didn't get it out um it is and was part of our um, original work scope um, that was identified for this building in our long-range facilities plan um, it survived the first uh, amendment to our plan which took quite a bit of um, the project scope out of this building applied those revenues to other pro other projects and other schools and it still remains um, in the plan for this building and it was identified in the uh, scope of work remaining for this building well, thank you okay we are now moving to let's see 3b member welty um thank you um oh no, 3B was Member Welty, and then Member Johnson wanted a separate vote on two. Sorry. Sorry. Um, we, we've had uh, some some fairly passionate uh, requests that we keep the uh, the policy that uh, was around just before I got elected uh, 18, 19 years ago that uh, uh, called on the state auditor to audit us every five years. It was something that was done... Uh, I think the first year or two that I was on the school board and then just wasn't done since and I was a part of that regime so for uh, the last uh, six or seven years of my school board tenure the first time through we didn't bring the auditor back and uh, that has continued on uh, I do believe that the auditor uh, can be prevailed upon to uh, perform audits obviously the uh, auditor's office has changed through the years I will note that uh, when we discussed this at uh, our business meeting, rather than it being a very contentious discussion, it actually was 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 handled very very well. And uh, uh, the one thing that I was concerned about, because I did say in the last meeting, at the first reading, that I planned on voting against this, was that while it obviously was no longer routine for a state auditor to uh, to uh, do the uh, the auditing of a school district it was still possible that a school district could request that it be done and uh, the auditor would consider whether to do it or not and in, in as a result of that discussion uh, uh, I made a uh, an amendment and then uh, 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 member Mernicke made an infinitely simpler <laughs> one which was just simply to point out that while we would no longer uh, have a policy that would would ask for something that we have been asking for for the last 16 years every five years uh, he would just simply he would he inserted the, the these lines which are now in the current policy subsequent school boards may request audits by the state auditor and I think it's important for future school boards to realize that that is something that is within their scope and purview they can make a request it doesn't mean the auditor will will uh, abide by it and and I certainly would be inclined to have the auditor ask the auditor to do this at some future time uh, while I still remain on the school board um, there's been a lot of talk about uh, something that I I'm sort of suspicious of uh, the people who are our vendors even even the accountants don't necessarily want to lose uh, an important client when they they do an audit and I think that's been true back from the time we had McGladry pulling do the work and mm -hmm. and um, Eichel and Schelling and 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 now too with with Whipfly um, and I would point out that sometimes it's good to have somebody else take a look at what a school district does and I think the remarkable example of that is the St. Francis School District which some of us may know uh, recently uh, uh, had kicked off a, a school board member over of all things plagiarism well I think the the real story is what that board member did was ask for an awful lot of data and he fell afoul of, of some people in the administration and rather remarkably I just was sent a, a news story the superintendent of that school district has been forced to leave um, because because Melty, the, this, is off the this is this is certainly not off the topic and it has everything to do about auditing chair Saliga Punko let me just finish the story and you will understand why 
Uh, what has been discovered since the superintendent was the primary response, person responsible for, for uh, having the board censure and remove the, uh, the school board member who made a lot of data requests is that actually the superintendent was overseeing a, a lot more money from the state than the school district St. Francis deserved to have. And as a result, he is now the, he is, he is no longer the superintendent of the St. Francis district. So, this is to me a, a a a case that illustrates why sometimes you have to have uh, some outside force take a look at what goes on, and I'm very pleased that the change that we have suggested will remind future school boards that if they wish to, for whatever reason, to assure the public that we are are doing our very best to be as honest as possible. I'm I'm very pleased with this insertion by uh, by Member Mernicke that uh, reminds future school boards they can request these sorts of audits by the state. So I'm very pleased with this as it stands. Well, and I know Member Mernicke did a very thorough job of of actually calling the state auditors. And as long as I've been on the board, we have requested. Um, different bids from different companies and the state auditor was one of them and they just don't do that anymore so anyway we're going to go on this is a separate vote member johnson. member johnson wanted a separate vote we'll do that were you going to say something too about it okay sure if i could get that wording that member welty mentioned that it's right Bernanke. there page 56 where page 56 page 56 right here. Subsequent school boards may request audits by the state auditor. Okay, I see that. I do have a couple comments on it. I'm going to be voting for this because I think it's a good update. I do want to second what member Welty said about we actually had a good discussion. I want to thank, um, thank the board for having that uh, discussion. I do think that it's important to have uh, independent auditors. Auditors sometimes even have to have auditors, as uh, as I brought up at the last committee meeting. The Arthur Anderson firm was brought up at that committee meeting, as one of the member speakers did as well today. Uh, audits are an important thing, and just because an auditor says they're a CPA doesn't mean that they always are immaculate. And that's why we have auditors, and I think this is important. I think that uh, in this case, I think the state uh, could certainly could be asked to pursue that, and and I think that uh, again, I was a little bit surprised why people wanted to change this. But again, I will save those comments, and I, I will be voting for this and uh, thank you for that uh, that having that amendment i think that covers that thank you uh, the reason for the change was because the present policy 3215 requires an audit by the state i both talked personally to a person who worked at the at this office of the state auditor, and I, he referred me again to uh, another CPA who works as deputy state auditor. And from the deputy state auditor, I said, does the state auditor perform annual audits for school districts? And it says, quote, the office of the state auditor does not perform any financial and compliance audits for school districts. Does not. Now, we can have petition audits. You can ask them if you you know if if a school board wants to, we can have a petition audit. Of course we can, but in my conversations with them, they don't do that. In fact, they're even cutting back on, on just the the number of audits they do on a regular basis. County audits, for example, they're they're down to nine, I think. The Minnesota School Board Association recommends independent, certified public accountants to audit school districts. Rochester, St. Cloud, Apple Valley, hire private auditing firms. Uh, it's just, it's something that, that needed to be changed, and, and it has, and I appreciate Member Welty's comments. I, th I think that subsequent boards, if they want to have, ask the state to come in and audit, they have all the rights in the world to do that. Member Johnston. Sure. Just to just to 
A couple um, clarifications on that. What the state auditor replied to you, the CPA you mentioned, was that they do not perform annual financial audits. Annual is a key word which you neglected to put in there. Of course, the auditor will take do audits if they're asked to. Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of, uh, there was a petition audit here, which they didn't do, but that's, uh, that's another question. And nobody ever has said that we should not be contracting out uh, CPAs to do our audits, and uh, uh, I certainly appreciate being re-emphasizing that, but I never recall anybody ever saying that we should not be having uh, independent auditors to do that. And, and this policy, this language will make sure that happens. It will assure that we, if we want, uh, which I would like to have uh, the state come in and do a uh, in-depth financial audit, uh, um, we can still do that, or what they call an investigative audit. We're going to vote on number 3B, just that, um, State Auditor's Review of Finances. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries unanimously. And we're going to move on. Member Johnson wants a separate vote on 3C, correct? So is there any discussion? Member Johnson. Just uh, correct me, is this the first or the second reading? Mm -hmm. First reading. Okay. Member Walty. Uh, yes, a couple of questions about this, and then a, a, a comment that I mentioned at the committee meeting. Um, as I understand it from our discussion, uh, this year is an election year for the Duluth School Board uh, 2015, and it is assumed that should this pass, uh, the elections this year will proceed as planned. Is that correct? We don't know yet. We have to decide that next me. Or yeah. Next me. Me. Oh. So first reading. So first reading. Yeah. No decision. Well, then, in other words, we we have not determined that the elections for 2015 would will proceed. That this somehow might change that. Point of order, man. Um. Just can I point let of order. Remember, uh, I'll I'll yield the floor. Go ahead. Um. We, by, by our rules, we have to have a first reading, and that's what this is. We still have, I mean, we, we can't pass anything tonight on this, but uh, we will discuss this at the next business meeting, and, uh, and that's the time where we should come up with the changes that uh, we were talking about, three-year terms and the such, at, the, at our next business meeting. Right. Yeah. Member Welty, go ahead. I guess I'd have to say I beg to differ. I, I guess I was assured when we talked that while we might have three or five year, we might have three year terms, that would be something that would take place in future, future, future election years as we, we went from this odd year election to a, a, a new election. It but, might not be. It might just be written for. Well, if if I was assured that all of the people here on the school board were to serve out the terms uh, that they were elected to, and that this board was not, perhaps it is thinking about cutting a year off of a term that somebody was elected to, or adding a a term on without having the the public participate, I I find that very troubling. If that's what's being contemplated. And, and, and I guess the, the question that I asked Byrne was, <laughs> would, would that happen? And, and, and I guess in the first reading, I would like to know what the, what, what the impact of, of this uh, particular uh, is. I mean, is this meant to give somebody that's currently serving an extra year they weren't elected to? I don't know. Well, that's. <laughs> we don't know yet. Is there is there anybody that can an answer it? The, the chair has just said that she doesn't know, and I would like to have an answer before I even want this to go on a, for a second reading. Because if that was to be the case, I would vehemently oppose giving a elected a member an additional unelected year via policy change. Member Murnicky, go ahead. Well, we discussed this and. What we, we, we talked about was the next, and again, we haven't decided anything, but you, you, you know, you're, you're saying, well, are we going to shorten anybody's term? And the answer is no, I, not that I know of and not that I support, or are we going to add to people's t terms? And I said, not that I know of, not that I support, and I think it stays at that. I mean, 
We, we can be very cautious about this, obviously, but that's not the intent. As I understood it in, in our discussion, we said if this passes, the next election will be for a three-year term, and then in the two-year uh, election after that, I mean, well, 2015 would be for a three-year term. You remember I was doing that at the meeting. And the 2017 would be for a three-year term. It would not shorten your present term or add to my present term. It would just be those running in 2015 would understand. And if you remember, the superintendent quoted a, a, a state statute that gives school districts the power to make an adjust one-time adjustment to reach the, the even-numbered years. So what we do in May... What we're going to do in May is we're going to sit down and say, all right, where do we want to go with this? And then we bring it up to the, in the May final um, school board meeting to, to make a decision. But I didn't see any sentiment as far as, and, and I don't think we could shorten anybody's term, and I didn't see any sentiment for adding to the present terms. Okay, I'm going to move on just because we have a lot of board members that want to make comments. Um, Member Leffler, if you want to clarify something? Yeah, I just wanted to, to clarify the intent of this being brought forward was part of our early budget discussions as a cost savings and um, a recommendation from the Minnesota School Board Association. That was the intent of bringing this forward. And uh, there would be, uh, and, and we talked about this um, about just getting more information when other school districts have done this, uh, what other processes have they used. And so just a reminder again, the intent of this came from the Minnesota School Board Association. The intent was uh, it was brought up in our budget discussions for cost savings. Okay, Member Johnston. Sure, I'm all in favor of this. Uh, technically, I thought we had a good discussion on this at the committee meeting, but now I'm hearing the chair say that she's not so sure about anything anymore. That does cause me uh, concern. I certainly, uh, if I could be assured that what Mr. Mernicke said, which I thought we all agreed to, that uh, we all got elected, I think it even says on our, whatever the election uh, election um, document that we were elected for four years. That uh, certainly has to be the case. Uh, but it doesn't mean we were elected for three years or if we were elected for five years. But going on in the future, as Member Mernicke suggested, I thought was a good idea. But uh, seeing now the consternation or the, the concern here, the confusion, which I think it can very well be, that I'm going to make a motion that we table this until we clarify this, until we know what the intent of the board is. This is, um, we have plenty of time to do it and actually get information and our suggestions from the Minnesota School Board Association. Second. Okay, so we have a motion to table this. Um, and a second, so you have that down, Member Leffler Kemp. Okay, we're going to have some discussion because some of these um, issues, I think with the first reading, you can make some changes like we did with the gift, and, and that's the thing, I think a little bit more research and discussion needs to happen. That's why it's a first reading, and you can change between the first and second reading. I'm going to go to Member Harala. Go ahead. You know, I actually... I thought that it was a good discussion that we'd had, and I think we need more discussion because I know following, then we did get it, and was it following that we received some communication from Mr. Hansen on clarifications of approving, was it, the weeks are coming together. I'm not remembering, but there was something about adding or subtracting terms. I, I don't know how I feel on this. I think it's important to make, to make sure we get public input and that we have a broader discussion at the board, but I don't know if this would actually mean tabling. I think it, we could have a good uh, committee conversation this coming month, um, but I do want to make sure that whatever we do is um, in full. Like we're very open in the public about it. So, thank you, um, Member Mernicke. Let's see. This was brought up last year as a possible money saving uh, prop proposition. Uh, I would greatly oppose any uh, 
attempt to shorten anybody's term that is now presently elected. And I, I don't think it's legal, and I don't think we'll do it. I would also oppose <laughs> adding a year to anybody's term uh, for many, many reasons. Um, I remember having this discussion, and I think Mr. Welty and I were in agreement that it, if we tell the people who are going to run that one time only, three-year term, and two years from now, one time only, three-year term, they'd have to accept it if they're going to run. They can always run again. But that would get us on track with the even-numbered years. Uh, I don't... I, I, there's this feeling out there that we're trying to pull something, that this is nefarious. It, it's, it's basically we're trying to get our elections on to an even number year, and I think that's a solution. Member Johnson. Wait. It's, it's not working. Wait. Okay. Well, I'd say I agree with Member Mernicke, uh, Member Harlow, about that. I think that uh, that's what we're saying. That's why I've asked the table this. I think that uh, it's appropriate. We've already had, I think, more discussion than really warrants moving forward. So I think it's time we do table it and talk it over. We had a good discussion in the past. Maybe we're going to have to be more specific in the, and uh, by maybe adding an amendment after more thorough discussion. Member Walty. Thank you, uh, Chair Saliga um, you know, I, I am uh, I am reassured by, uh, by by Member Harla's concerns and and uh, and Member Mernicke's, uh belief that uh, that this is not likely to shorten anybody's term that they were elected to or add to a term years that were not placed before the voters. Um, I don't know that it's a that that I want to suggest that there's a question of anything nefarious. I just asked a question, which was which was which was related to the same discussion that we had before, and I suddenly got an ambiguous answer that nobody could be sure whether this would cut off a term or whether this would add years to somebody's term that they were not elected to serve. And I'm glad to know that, that what looks to me right now to be a clear majority of the school board is, is in agreement that that would be a terrible thing. Um, but I do think tabling this is a good idea. Uh, it was, as people have mentioned, originally brought a year ago as a discussion for the possible savings of $50,000 because uh, we wouldn't have to share the, have to shoulder the entire burden of, of, of an election, which is about $50,000. Um, but I'm sure the people at this this uh, at this dais uh, podium know that I, I feel very strongly about the sanctity of elections. I I spent about three or four years arguing with uh, uh, the board about uh, uh, referendum elections, and uh, I feel strongly about the uh, service that we were all elected to. So the, the 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 possibility, however slight it might be, that this could result in in a decrease in elected persons elected time in office or an addition <laughs> since since chills up my spine so i would be happy to entertain this uh if i could be assured that that those things would not happen and i don't want to consider this for a second reading until that is that is is uh is uh till that can be made quite clear to us Mr. Hansen, would you like to respond? Uh, just to uh, reemphasize, uh, uh, I guess, my notes from the uh, committee meeting and, and part of the assignment that I received coming out of that meeting um, was that uh, uh, your desire was for more information on what your options were relative to the transition. I mean, this will result in a change to something. Um, and the and I think you have some options in that direction, and um, and it was our intention to put that together for you for the uh, um, for your discussion and uh, possible decision in May. And uh, the other request was uh, so. In addition to what the statute references are, 
Uh, the other request was for, again, as Member uh, Leffler-Kemp mentioned, what other districts that have done this transition, how they have done it, just as examples, and then possibly for an attorney's opinion to, uh, uh, to look at that as well. And those were the notes that I made from the comments that were given me at the committee meeting. And I just offer that for your reference. Thank you, Mr. Hansen. And I, w I would imagine, I mean, just like we changed the other um, the other policy changes, um, we can add or take away things for the second reading. So a first reading, we can still make changes for a second reading, but we have to do two readings. Let's see. Go ahead. I would agree with that. It, ultimately, it depends on the comfort level of the board as to how much you've discussed it and whether you're okay with you know, uh, that changes aren't overly significant and you're willing to carry forward with it as a second reading or that you're more comfortable as a first reading or whatever. But again, that's the board's discretion. Thank you. Member Welty. Um, Oops. I'd be quite happy to, to, uh, to discuss this as a, uh, um, in, in a first reading next, next month if we table this now um, because I, I want to have the, the questions that we directed uh, the administration to find for us. And apparently that that information is not available now. I'd like to have that at the beginning of a first reading. So again, I, I, I urge us to table this and make this part of a first reading at our, our next, uh, uh, next meeting in May. Okay, we have um, a motion to table. And I just want to remind boards, if we have to go in May and June, it gets pretty much into the end of the school year and pass. So. I, I don't know if it would be so great to table it, especially if we can make changes. But that's my opinion. All those in favor of tabling this motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay? Aye. No? Okay, so who voted for that? Okay, members Welty and Johnston and everyone else voted to not table. Okay, so that falls. So we're going to vote on C because Member Johnson wanted a separate vote. So all in favor of bylaw 9115. He wanted a separate vote. Yeah, he wanted a separate vote. He wanted a separate vote. Yeah, yeah, we can. We can vote on this just one item. So all in favor of this school district elections um, first reading say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, so that's 5 2 that carries. Um, okay, and then we have the rest of, I don't think there's anything else that was pulled. So we're going to vote on the rest of the business committee without all the resolutions and everything else that we voted for. All those in favor of the business committee report say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes six to one with Member Johnston voting against it. And I think that is it. We don't have any special resolutions, correct? I don't think we do. And um, Member Harla, did you want to say something? Go ahead. I just wanted to highlight, um, I was reminded as I walked in tonight that it's Administrative professionals, professionals Day and Week. And just a big thank you to Sue and to Melinda for, our, for all you do for the board um, with all of our details and supporting. We really appreciate your work. And just please pass that. We appreciate both of you immensely. But also, please pass that along to the rest of the administrative staff as well, too. Thank you, Member Harla, thank for you. remembering that. And Uncle Member Welty. Yes, I have some questions uh, that I, I would uh, like to have some answers to. I, I don't believe that I've seen anything in, uh, in emails that uh, outline this, but it has to do with uh, uh, a concern of, of Member Johnson's, and that has to do with uh, who represents us. Uh, I have heard that uh, we have had a change in attorneys in the case in which uh, we, we brought against uh, Member Johnston, but I've not, I've not been told that by the administration. Um, it, I believe Mr. Member Johnston requested about three months ago for the latest information about uh, 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 billing by the, uh, the attorneys that we have had so far. In fact, uh, we are heading for a uh, hearing on May 6th, not very far into the future, and, and I've not been given any uh, insights as a member of this board about, about these uh, attorneys who are representing my interests after uh, after three or four months, and I think it's time that uh, I be given some of that information. So uh, I, I, I hate to say that this is a demand, but uh, I, I am a member of the board, and I'm embroiled in something that uh, is un, 
unpleasant, but it's something I need to know about. And so far, I've been kept in the dark, and I, I hope that changes very quickly. Go ahead, Superintendent. Um, I believe um, what you're referring to is um, Member Johnston's case against five members of the board, and you were not included in that case. Um, when the board, and when a case is brought against the board, it is the insurance company who chooses um, who represents the district in that case. And so those who were named in the suit have been contacted by um, that representation. Okay. Member Leffler Kemp. Uh, I was, I'm, I'm going to pass. Thank you. Okay. Member Walty. I, 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 oh. uh, well, I, I've heard the justification given as to why five members are a part of this, but I'm a part of the school board. I'm, I, okay the, uh, I okay the costs. Uh, I would like to have a, uh, an attorney's justification for keeping me in the dark about this. Uh, I have been an ally of art in a number of things, so I can understand why some people might not want me to, to be privy to this information. But uh, as a school board member, I am a, I am a part of, of, of this overall case, and, and I want to have some legal uh, explanation that I can take a look at as to, to why I'm not a party to the information that the attorneys representing the school board uh, using taxpayer money, uh, I, I do not understand why I am not, not been given that information. And I'm rather alarmed that no one told me that this would be the case, and I probably should have asked this question some months ago, so I could have raised the objection earlier. But I would like to have some attorney explain to me why I, as a board member, uh, am being denied information about, uh, about, about this suit. Furthermore, we do have a hearing coming up, um, I think that's May 11th, and that one, I believe, is the one that some people have been saying we were going to have as, as early as January, but it's been postponed about uh, four or five months. I, I certainly am a part of, of that, and I know nothing about what our attorneys are doing in, in that realm either, and if the other board members are being informed about that process, and I'm not, that's not right. That's not happening. So, Superintendent, go ahead. Um, as you may or may not know, I have very little to do with any of these cases. I have not served as the uh, go-to person. Mr. Hansen has served in that capacity, and the board chair or Mr. Hansen would be able to answer your questions as I have not been involved. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, and I don't know anything yet about May 11th. Haven't heard anything. So that's where we're at. Member Johnston. Uh, just to kind of remind the board that uh, the defendant, one of the defendants is the school district. Uh, Member Wealthy and myself are, are the school board, I should say, not the school district. And we are a part of this board, and certainly Mr. Welty is entitled to get all this information. And again, I'd like to remind the board that the reason I brought this suit against five of you board members was not because I uh, uh, wanted to do this, was to defend myself so you can't remove me. You are trying to remove me from the school board, remind you. And, uh, and that's what I'm doing. Five of you board members voted to start the process, and we all have every, uh, every indication, as everybody in this town knows, that you will follow through with that no matter what the hearing says. And uh, that is why I've done that. I've said that publicly. It's very important. And so the reason uh, you are defendants is you are trying to remove me from a duly elected position by 20,000 people in West Duluth, which is the goal of five people to remove me 
uh, when I represent West Duluth is really, really unbelievable. And that's why I'm defending myself. Just to, just to remind people, we're, we're, I estimate somewhere around $150,000 now this is costing. Uh, again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we're going to be way, way more than that before this is done, unless the uh, superintendent and the chairman of this board uh, decide to do something else, not pursue their personal vindictiveness against me and my spouse. Member Welty. It, it strikes me, again, as an untrained, uh, somebody untrained in the law, that if, if the defense of the five school board members who have been uh, sued by Member Johnston um, are not taking or treating this as a school board action. Perhaps they should be dipping into their own pockets and paying for their own defense. I, I do not see how we can use public money and deny this school board member, who is not a party to this, uh, from information as to what the school district's attorneys are doing. That just strikes me as asinine, and that's why I want to have some, some legal opinions, because it seems to me that suddenly on something that is critical to the school board, to this community, to this school district, we have one elected at-large school board member who was elected by the entire community who's, who doesn't have any information. This is this is not a very clean process. So I'm looking for somebody, and if it's not the superintendent, uh, I'm looking for somebody to, to provide me with the details or give me a strong justification so I can go consult attorneys and find out whether or not I, as a school board member, am being deprived the public or the data that I, as a board member, should know. Okay, we're adjourned at 8.50.